Good morning, Beck Revit users. This is going to be our fourth video in a series we're working with curtain wall doors. We're going to look at our um, Horton style doors and our telescoping slider doors in this video. As with previous videos, in order to put a door in a curtain wall, we need to remove the sill panel. If it's pinned, you'd unpin it. In this case, it's unpinned. We need to swap the glass with the door type we want. So if I type in door, we're going to see that we have a couple different kinds of doors. The sliding commercial biparting, and we also have the commercial telescoping, and they have these potentially odd looking nomenclature to them. But what these mean is, we'll show you. OX means that it's operable and fixed. So we've got a sliding panel that's operable and a fixed panel, a sliding panel and an operable. If we look at an SOSX, that means we have a swing panel and an operable panel. And so this type has all of those choices. And if we look at the, the, the telescoping, these are much wider doors but they are going to have, this is three panels, so you see one, two, three. So you have two sliding fixed panels and one operable swing panel. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we need to know about these doors to get the mullions in the right place is their type width. And that is in the name of the door. So this is a nine foot. And we know our mullions are two and a half inches wide in this system. So in order to sync this thing up, we just need to adjust the dimension from grid to grid to 9 foot 2.5 inches. And that will sync it right up into place. Now, what we really probably want to do is change these mullions. We can unpin them to an end or end opposite condition. We talked about this in the previous videos. And don't feel bad if you get it wrong. I get it wrong every time. You're never going to know which is end or end opposite. So just know that you're going to do that process a couple times. And note, if you have more stacked, we talked about this in another video, you need to unpin them all. You can do that by right clicking and selecting all mullions on grid line. That'll get all vertical mullions. And then you can unpin all of them with one click there and then and no shim no nope, wrong one that's fine and opposite. And now we have a, our nice system now let's look at this in section also so in section we see this door was seven foot high so if we look at its type parameters you will see that the slider panel height is nine foot rather says seven, so that's either a mistake in the type. Or I don't know what I'm talking about. Either way, let's go ahead and put the curtain grid in. And let's see. Let's see what. Um, so nine foot is nine foot is the door height in this case. So if this was supposed to be a seven foot tall door, I believe we would change this to seven foot. And maybe that's uh, just a wrong parameter in our template. I'm not positive. But look at whatever door you're using and uh, adjust these as appropriate. So now the same thing in, that we didn't plan, by default, it's gonna think you need, wanted a uh, sliding door on the top. We're gonna switch that back to our glazing panel. And now we're gonna change this horizontal mullion, excuse me, to the end no shim, and opposite no shim, and then we need to move it down. And you can, don't need to do any math for this because you can go point to point. Now, sometimes these um, systems have taller heads to them. If that's the case with the one you're using, you can come in here and adjust the head height. Let's say it had an integral closure on it. This might be oh, 8 inches tall or 12 inches tall. We can adjust that, and we should see that head frame grow up 
8 inches. So now we have a taller head and we would need to take and grab that mullion and move it up as needed. So that's it. That is what these telescoping and Horton sliders are. I hope this is helpful. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us.